listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Established in 1930 and under the current ownership since 1987, the New Jersey Fire Equipment Company handles a complete line of fire department equipment and supplies. Headquartered in Greenbrook, the company operates full 3M Scott service facilities in Ridgefield Park and Toms River, staffed by 10 fully authorized Scott certified technicians with a fleet of six fully equipped service vans. All New Jersey fire technicians and sales representatives are active or retired firefighters, officers or chief officers, career and volunteer. They understand the business and the importance of their work. New Jersey Fire has represented Scott since Earl Scott entered the SCBA business at the end of World War II. Among other leading manufacturers represented by New Jersey Fire are Globe and Firedex Turnout Gear, Mercedes Hose, Task Force Tips and Akron Brass, Hygienol, Firehooks, Arctic Compressors, MSA Carnes Helmets, ChemGuard Foam, Alkalite and Duo Safety Ladders, BA Face Shield Protectors, Truckman's Choice Saws, Groves gear racks and washer dryers, SuperVac fans, RPI, Streamlight, and many others. A New Jersey incorporated and based company, sales and service are limited to the state of New Jersey. Find us now at www.njfe.com. That's www.njfe.com.
Equip your fire and rescue emergency response personnel with the equipment they need to save lives and keep themselves as protected as possible while in harm's way with safety equipment from One Source Fire Rescue. Our comprehensive supply company provides the life-saving implements emergency responders need to be prepared for any situation. With dependable quality products by reputable companies such as Traeger, Viking Life Saving Equipment, Fire Hooks, Crew Boss, Kuriyama Fire Hose and Nozzles, Phoenix Technology, Helmets, Vanguard Gloves, Tempest Fans, Ready Rack, Black Diamond Boots, and much more. Our quality products are competitively priced to meet your budget criteria. One Source was established in 2012 and continues to strive to provide not only the best products on the market, but customer service. One Source has been and continues to be committed to meeting all new and demanding challenges in the firefighting industry with the highest quality and the most dependable products. As I try not to fall off the boat here, our third interview is with Ray Seely, a man I know very well, but finally meeting for the first time, first face to face, face to face. So, charter member of SOC in 1998, 270, later on 288, 25 years later, full circle, here you are on the boat. All friends from the past and still friends to this day. It's so funny, I, I worked a lot in the Marine Division and I got promoted. So, to, to be on the fly boat again as a guest when there's beer. It's, it's really a, a spectacular thing. It's funny, I, I worked in the Scooby Unit for a while, and I, uh, there was a boat assigned to the Scooby Unit, and the chief in, uh, in charge of the SOC said, here's the rules for you having a boat. No fishing poles ever, and no beer ever. And I said, oh good chief, you got it, you know? And, so take it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good experience. I imagine, I imagine. Now, I imagine you feel like a proud papa, too, because, listen, even if you weren't at 288 from the beginning, you knew Kevin and Lou from the beginning, and then you work with them later on, so seeing them turn getting salty into this. You, you know, the other night, watching the show, watching uh, all those guys from 288 together, it was so good seeing a bunch of guys that went through the trenches together, a sock being formed, going to units, all the um, animosity of other companies that really didn't, uh, agree with the formation of the squads, but to see those guys have uh, made a success out of a new unit and, and learned their skill and became a great man, became a viable force in the special operations, technical rescue portion of the FDNY. So it was all good to, uh, to see those guys relive that stuff and to be actually be assigned to that company where all these guys had a degree of professionalism that was. T 10 years later, was still, still to be admired. Yeah, and 25 years later, SOC is not only going strong still, it's the model for the fire service worldwide. You know, it, it's funny how um, we were just talking earlier about once I went to SOC, I, I went and did things I never thought I would do as a firefighter for the FDNY. 
and then get promoted and get my tenure in more schools and learning more things and giving me more experiences, it just became an avocation rather than a vocation. It was something that I loved to do and I felt blessed to do. Uh, you've been great to get salty, you've been great to meet, it's great to finally meet you, my friend. So good to finally meet you, in person. my friend. Appreciate it. been on Get Salty quite a few times. He's been on my program, and that's current FDOY Chief of Safety, Frank Lee. And here you are, charter member of SOC 25 years ago, 25 years later, still doing great things in the fire service when you're not with the FDNY, you're teaching, and you're here with friends of the past, friends of the present. I imagine it's a great feeling. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Charter member of Squad 270, but come on, bring it in first, brother. Come on. As we go under the Brooklyn Bridge, right? So you think about one of the iconic images in New York City, the Brooklyn Bridge, and um, yeah, being on the um, being on uh, a retired Marine boat is uh, is, is pretty cool, right? Uh, the history on this boat and the uh, decades of service with all the uh, firefighters that are on here, it's just a, a unique event for sure. And it's great to finally see you, and I mean, I've seen you enough times, right? But to meet you in uh, <laughs> to meet you in the flesh. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really awesome. Good. And even the person it's named after, John Harvey, who heroically lost his life in service to the people in the city of New York, you know, his legacy lives on. The more that we, not only that people come on this boat, but talk about him, inquire about him. So it's still full circle with the fire service. It's really, like I said, at the top, a beautiful thing. Yeah, and the fact that the boat, right, they've kept the, the name, the heritage of it. So it's, uh, in the FDNY, as you know, right, we never forget, um, we never forget our fallen. And the fact that, uh, when, when a boat like this is retired and, and uh, someone else takes the same passion and care about it that we did in the FDNY. So it's really, really cool. Still goes strong. He doesn't age. He doesn't age. He's been over 30 years in the fire service and he's still just as passionate about it. Ladies and gentlemen, current FDNY chief of safety. Uh, yeah. So, that's guys in the background. Go ahead, chief. Yeah, that's, uh, um, yeah, I love the job. So i tell you what, you have 31 years in the FDNY and, um, I tell people all the time, I can live to be 120 years old. I'll never go to enough fires to dissatisfy the appetite, right? So you don't want you don't want fires to occur, but when they do, right, you want to be working for them because there's nothing like the feeling when you know in the olden days we had the plexiglass in the back and the boss would bang on it and you knew you're going to work. The dispatcher would be telling you that they're loading up the box. Uh, they get numerous calls and reports of people trapped every. Every cell in your body is at a heightened awareness. Um, you're not scared, but you're at a heightened, a heightened awareness. And it's just, you can't replicate that feeling. People try to, they jump out of airplanes, they do all sorts of stuff. But that feeling um, that you get when that happens, it's just, uh, it's so hard to describe, uh, but I'll, I'll never get enough of that. And I, I talked to um, my buddy who's gonna be retiring soon. I told him, I said, at some point, Right, firefighting is a young person's job. At some point, you got to say, "I can't do it." And uh, this guy, he's a, a lieutenant in ladder 117 in Queens. He's been there for more than 20 years as a lieutenant, doing it, going up and down the stairs, doing. You know, he comes home, and I'm like, "You're like, it's time." You know, hey man, your 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 body's your your body's writing checks. Your mind's writing checks. Your your body can't cash. Right at some point, um, but it's just, but he gets it. Right, he's. He understands the FDNY, the FDNY way, and absolutely loves it. So, current FDNY chief of safety, frankly, very well. Look like I'm going to school, but this is all my equipment to record, and I'm back with another interview, of course. And I think it's his fourth, fifth, or sixth one. Anyway, it's Katriana Balloon. Nice to meet you in person. We met, of course, on Getting Salty. You have a very compelling story, and of course, your father was hero firefighter John Ballou. So, being here now, and it's it's so true that whenever a firefighter dies in the line of duty, it's true that whatever the department is, especially the FDNY, they don't forget. And I imagine that feeling is on full display for you today. They have not forgotten your father, and they've shown so much love to not only him, but to you and the rest of your family by extension. Yeah, definitely. And everybody who's like been on the boat here has been like come up to me and said that they watched my interview and whatever. They knew my dad in some way. They knew my uncles who were on the job so everybody kind of knows me somehow already yeah. you're working on a project you talked about it on getting salty of course we're trying to make sure it hits the necessary people you can elaborate further here if you'd like 
Yeah, so I wrote a screenplay called Black Sunday, and it's about the Black Sunday fires. Um, and it starts on the day before um, the Black Sunday fire, where there was where fires, where there was a fire in Brooklyn and the Bronx, and um, my dad passed away in the Bronx fire. And um, then it continues on to the five years after, where um, my family endured a criminal trial as well as a civil trial. Being on the other side of it now, the proceedings are done. I mean, obviously, the impact is still felt all these years later, but that aspect of it, there is some some sort of closure, at least. Is that what allowed you to feel more comfortable chronicling that portion of your life? Um, honestly, it took just time in general and going. It's the, the trials ended when I was 15, and I didn't feel comfortable enough to even talk about it until I was 18, I would say. And now I'm 20, and we're almost 21, and I... I've now fully written about it and spoken about it on like different media outlets and now I'm fully comfortable but I think it just took time therapy <laughs> processing it and being being okay with what happened. Even though there's a strike going on right now, we can make an exception for Kasha Adabalu. Thank you very much. Thank you.